in the Discussion Podcast. This week we have Peter Tranon, Ubisoft's junior lighting artist. Dude, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, it's been it's it's, it's a, a big honor, you know, to be on another podcast. I think this is my fourth one. So Damn, you did a round, sir. Yeah. Right. I've I'm more curious, there's there's something I noticed about you. Um I mean I know you within this sort of environment art community, everyone knows everyone, but like everyone knows you especially. Uh, some of the great work you've been putting out recently. Um, sure. So, most lighting artists I know tend to go the route of they train in environment art, they get, you know, they spend mm-hmm. a couple of years in environment art, and then at some point they make the leap into lighting art. But they've done a couple of years of like professional environment art first. You right. went in straight away, like, into junior lighting art. Now, right. for me, I, and I'm curious to explore this because you don't see this very often you must have known exactly what you wanted to do you've got all your re- you've done all your training and your research to lead you to this point so i just talk mm-hmm. about how you get you get to that point of our first job of a junior lighting artist sure i mean in school i i started as a well i guess that i wanted to be an environment artist not to make environment and stuff but at some point i realized that uh, there was something that's lacking in all my environments which is lighting and that got me to uh, searching at what's lighting and how to do it and you know all the uh, the the fundamentals about lighting and stuff and and then eventually i got i got uh, I, well i kind of realized that lighting artist was actually a job that you know people actually do and not as a as a side task as a uh, as a environment artist right so that got me to it i just looked up some lighting artists and what did they do uh, one of them, one of my first slang artists that I found that actually got me uh, passionate about it, it was Boone Cutter, uh, a lighting artist at Naughty Dog. He did a, a talk about you know his daily, daily life job as Naughty Dog, and what he did on the game and what's his thought process stuff, and that's something that's really interesting and that really made me uh, hooked in being a lighting artist, and that's I guess uh, why I got into it not not so much as an environment artist first in the industry and then something else but directly into lighting artists right and uh, that's also something that i noticed that uh it's high in demand and not so much not, like not a lot of students wants to be a lighting artist which is kind of something weird that i didn't understand back then i i think that one of the main reason was uh, you didn't have to create the assets but you just have to light someone else environment and that kind of seemed bad uh, in a portfolio like oh you you just took uh, all the work of uh, of the the environment artist and then you just light it and i guess that's one of the reasons why most students don't really uh, get into lighting artists at first but i didn't really care about that kind of stuff you know the the portfolio or how uh, you seem to 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 not do the work or as a, as a merit or stuff like that. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much how I got into lighting. Um, yeah. So it's it's to do, I guess, with that student mindset because it's kind of come up now, I guess, with um more publicly with Megascan stuff. So everyone's like, mm-hmm. I mean, I've done a piece myself where you do it. In Mega you use quick assets and you just focus on a light, and like I guess. And I know, you know what it's like as a student, I guess. It, most students are like, oh, no, if I don't make it myself, I can't get credit or anything like that. Exactly, yeah. Um, so it's basically that, but earlier on, like before the whole Megascans thing, it's just like, that is what lighting art is, I guess. You're, you're lighting a scene. Um, mm-hmm. The scene might not necessarily be yours, but that's not the point. Like, you're, that's not your job. Just like, I guess, in a game, you, you take a screenshot of a game uh, as an environment mm-hmm. artist and be like, hey, I worked on this game. You don't, you're don't not taking credit for the character on the screen or the UI. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah, it's a teamwork, right? It's not a, a thing that you show off and I and say that I exactly did this one model and that's what I did. It's a whole project thing it's a, as a team and not individually, right? So you have to think beyond that. Was it made of any resistance when you when you were looking, you know, training, you know, speaking to people before you landed the first job? Was there anyone saying to you like, "Hey, no, maybe you should do environment rights"? Be an environment artist first before you get to lighting art. Or was you know what was the reception to the people you're talking to at the time? I think it was good. My teachers uh, were pretty much uh, 
kind of not sure if it was a good thing but i was the only one doing a, that tried to go into uh, the lighting side of the, the industry so in some way I, I guess that i was unique and i felt that it was a good thing that i, I tried to not you know to stand out as a student um of course i seen all my friends that that most of my friends uh, mostly went to environment art and modeling stuff and prop assets so that uh, at first i was i wasn't sure you know there was a lot of question mark and uh, i might doubt myself at first and i wasn't sure but it's something i got up uh, you know after after a while i got used to it and i just i was sure uh, you know what i i wanted to do lighting was something that i was way more passionate about than modeling or texturing even so yeah no that's that's cool to hear i mean as well it's it's a curious thing because i thought i've known you for environments um in fact when i think like i said to you off air when you think of lighted you think of environments lighted you think of something to be quite static and obviously mm -hmm. environments are static so when you're you know, it's a natural parent and yeah. in your recent scene you had a character and in your description you said you've never lit a character and it threw up a whole new set of challenges and it never occurred to me i was like huh i guess having a character does change the way you like the scene and i, I don't know if that's me being just ignorant or dumb but you said it as a story clicked i was like okay this is this whole different thing so mm -hmm. i guess a two-part question a like how did you get you know because that's that was a conscious decision by you to do that yeah what led you to go okay my next project i need to do something i'm gonna like character because i have a showcase this because it feels like that's a that was a very conscious mm -hmm. decision and then b second part of that question being you know like how different is it like do you just treat it as a hero prop um do you have to consider other things like how i hate asking this question you know what is your thought process but like yeah. how do you tackle tackle you know lighting a character is it different to like an environment well, the the second part, which which is kind of easier to say, I guess uh, I had well, yeah, I had to consider the character as a as a hero prop, and less so as a moving character that can kind of move. Uh, I guess the uh, I would consider the my project with the the robot thing, right, to be as a marking shot where I try to make a poster, right, or something that as an invite. Uh, just to showcase the character as a static image and not so as a turntable or, or a cinematic that the character would move or talk or change the camera's perspective, right? So yeah, it was mostly as a cinematic marking shot of the of a character to showcase the character and not you know, the, the whole cinematic thing. And for the first part, I guess uh, it's something that I, I struggle with a lot uh, is uh, I'm afraid to plateau as a junior artist right so i constantly try to get out of my comfort zone and do something different and character was something that i, I never kind of did at work because it's uh, most of the time uh, the character lighting is for senior because the characters are important uh, we try to sell the characters the cosmetic stuff so uh, it has a lot of weight in the uh, the production right it costs a lot of money and it's part of the marketing stuff and I don't think as a junior, I had a lot of opportunities to lit a character. So that's why I tried to do that in my in my free time as a personal project, right? To to balance out all the, the tasks that I don't do at work. So I do it in my free time. And yeah, the character is, uh, it's something that I wish I, could, I had more chance to try at work to lit some uh, cinematic stuff with characters speaking but again that that really depends on the game right and the game that i just shipped recently which is hyperscape it doesn't have a lot of cinematic at all uh the only character stuff and cinematic stuff would be uh in the shop where you can turn the characters and see the skins and i guess that it's way more important um than than you know the environment stuff so uh, again, it's not my job. It's uh, more so like uh, a senior task, and that's why. Yeah. Do you think you'd ever get into um, kind of moving away from like real time gameplay, but marketing, like I said, the marketing shops, ones where it's like, okay, you have zero limitations to think of, because obviously, like 
when we whenever I spoke to speak to tech artists, mm-hmm. like the biggest thing for optimization, yeah, you know, we talk about poly counts of it and it's not really that big a, an issue. The issue is mm-hmm. quite often comes to lighting. Lighting is very expensive. And yeah. that obviously limits you as a creative because it's like you have to operate within the bounds of um the hardware. Does yeah. does the marketing sort of stuff ever appeal to you? Just be like just your job PR is to make this look as amazing as you possibly can. And that's it. We just want a beautiful static image. Do you ever consider that sort I, of stuff? I guess so, yeah. But I kind of prefer a video game compared to, to film, mm-hmm. just in general. But if I had the chance to uh, to do some static stuff for uh, games, then yeah, of course, that's something pretty badass, uh, in my opinion, right? To have a uh, in-game cinematic stuff. But again, that's such a... a an important task that I don't think junior have mostly mm-hmm. don't have chance to do that stuff. So of course, yeah, if I had the chance, I would do it for sure. I guess, yeah, I never really thought of, um, I've always perceived difference between our juniors, mids and seniors to do mm-hmm. with complexity, not necessarily value. And now you're right. saying it like that. Like, oh yeah. You know, the, the, the store stuff, for example, that's really, really important. Like that needs to look amazing. Yeah. It depends really on the game and studios, right? Because, mm-hmm. for example, uh, at Ubisoft, we try to sell all the cosmetic stuff, and that is one of the main sources of income for the game. Uh, and if we were to compare with Control, the game from Remedy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm pretty sure some junior did some uh, cinematic stuff in game, because those cinematic aren't as important in terms of values for the production, and that's good. But again, it depends on the game. And my game, it's mostly uh, with microtransaction and cosmetic stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's being a free game as well. The microtransaction is super important and has a lot more weight than uh, a single player game, which doesn't have necessarily a microtransaction, right? Yeah, that makes complete sense. And I guess part of it as well is you. Your seniors are kind of you. You act as what's the word? Advisors, I guess. Like you know, is you you're expected to come up with the ideas quite often. I imagine with your, with juniors, and this is like a very a generalized thing. But with your, yeah. with your juniors, you'll probably be far more um, directed. Like, okay, you're a junior. Here's your environment. What I'm thinking is maybe like light coming from here, here, and here. You yeah. See what you can do. Whereas, like, I guess with a senior, with the like, I'd like the, the shop example, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Just make it, make it look good. Yeah, that, that's your job. You you don't have yeah. an extra person giving you that direction. Um, yeah. But what does you know what what does the progression line look like for for a lighting artist? Because uh, I'm and this is like uh, this is like a very broad question. I get it because even when I phrase that question for a ramen artist, it's like. Yeah. Keep the model environment like you know pretty well as a junior mid you could mm-hmm. do it same quality a little bit quicker senior yeah. you could do same quality even quicker maybe with some new techniques like is that the same for lighting artists or is there like more expectation as you go up like what what's the what's the progression look like for a lighting artist i'm not so sure honestly i, I think it's mostly uh on the time on how quick i can do stuff and how how right i can do it on the first shot and how uh, I can balance the optimization with the art direction, right? Because sometimes the art director knows what he wants, but uh, on the tech side, it's not possible. So as a senior, I guess they would be uh, able to bridge the tech in the art direction uh, quicker, faster, and more efficient than a, a junior, right? Mm. Um, for example, on, on Hyperscape, uh, we had a lot of technical limitation as a battle royale game with 100 players so on the i had to you know decide a lot of stuff on where i had to cut to optimize the game and as a junior i guess i i'm still not sure if i did the right thing sometimes right but if there were a a, a senior that had to make those those decisions right i guess it would be quicker and more uh, straightforward and they would know what to cut and what to optimize properly for the game so yeah okay that's interesting so you're going to lead me on to um another sort of topic which we briefly discussed uh off air. i know we've spoken you know in the past about this and yeah. that's mentorships um i 
where to start with this. This is quite a, there's a lot of places we can start with. I guess we'll start with like, the, the broader terms. You know, light and eye in general. I know from experience, I'm trying to find like um, mm-hmm. light and mentors. And they are few far between. There's lots of environment art mentors. There's lots of character art mentors. I'm a team yeah, for art. sure. They are struggling to find lights in art. Now, that I feel odd. I find odd because I feel like lights in art is quite a teachable thing. There's a lot of technical elements to it. Um, mm-hmm. I, kind of, I kind of parry it to material art. Uh, material art is a very it's far more linear. Like you know, hey, use these really cool nodes like this, and you'll get mm-hmm. this effect. Great, you learn something. And I feel like light now there are components to that. You know, hey, here's how you make really good light functions. Here's the settings you need, and like these will give this effect of the light, and then you go away and make make your scene. Yeah. But there's not many about now. I don't know if that's a numbers game because there's just so few. There's a lot less lighting artists compared to environment artists, so therefore you can have less mentors. Mm-hmm. But is there something else to it? Why Why do you think there might be like so few mentors around for lighting art? Again, I guess it depends on how many students kind of want to do the lighting artist okay. kind of side thing. Um, to give a to give you a general idea, I get I think at Ubisoft Montreal we are pre- around 2,000, 2,000 employees. Um, that's including all the programmers and artists. But among those people, uh, we're pretty much around 20 to 30 lighting artists. Right, so it's a it's a huge difference in the ratio, and again, do we need that much ling- more than than what we have right now? And do is there a market for the students to become a lighting artist? Uh, maybe not as much as environmental artists or character artists, right? So I guess that's one of the reason. Um, that's I guess another point that where uh, a lot of students kind of reached out to a. Uh, uh, not as senior lighting artists to you know to have their advice and critiques and feedback and uh, that's something I had to uh, well I can't struggle with it re- really right because uh, I'm still a junior I don't think I'm ready to mentor per se like a, a proper mentorship like one on one multiple times a week or a month um, I try to get into it. Because uh, that's again uh, something that I tried to get out of my comfort zone, right? To teach, and that's something recently that I tried to uh, get into pretty much hardcore. And uh, but again, I'm not ready for it to do a proper mentorship. I started to do the uh, one-on-one sessions uh, with the experience Discord for the Patreons, uh, which is not as heavy, not as stressful, which is kind of easier for me to get into it and kind of feel how to do it properly and then there's also the tutorial part which i i'm trying to get into it too instead of doing simple breakdown for art session and on my projects i will try to record myself and actually go through the steps and do a, a video about it in fact i do have some videos uh some breakdowns some in-depth breakdowns that i've done but i just i'm just not ready to publish them or just to share them yet I'm still figuring out how to do it properly, right? So, yeah. But don't you think, maybe not phrase it as, so you, you're right, there probably isn't a need for like all these lighting artists or like, do students want to be lighting artists. However, yeah. using me as a case study, I'm an environment artist. Mm-hmm. I would love to be taught by a lighting artist because environments naturally go hand in hand with lighting. And yeah. if I'm someone who's independently lighting my own scenes, it's like, hey, I should probably learn to do this properly or at least semi-properly so that I'm you know, a bit more competent. Mm-hmm. There's, I think there's a lot of that going around. You know, people just want to tune up their skills, and like, I love the fact that people are. I'm starting to hear this more and more. This like this this phrase, tuning up a little bit. Like I've heard artists say, "Hey, I want to take a mentorship with so and so," because I just want to tune up a few elements and just you know give myself a booster. And I love that. I love the fact that that's how we're looking at it, rather than like, "Oh, I've got to undertake this huge education and like shift my whole career." It's like, no, just mm-hmm. just need a little 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 tweak here and there just to help me out, and. I'm just on the point of you know you don't think you're you're ready. Is that because you don't in in it's the doubt and the ability was it a job title like because for example me and you you were gonna you'd be able to teach me a million things about light which I have no clue about like is is it to do with your ability or is it to do with the job title do you think? I guess it's a mix of both because I'm not sure if I can properly teach it in the right way or at least the most efficient way. 
and there's still so much to learn myself to, uh, there's so much stuff that i'm still not sure if it's the proper way to do it even though i still do it at work and on, on my personal projects and i guess there's also the fact that you know being a junior i'm not ready i don't feel confident enough to 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 share the, the knowledge that i think it's right or not i'm not i'm not really even sure right so uh, that's a uh, it's something i struggle about i guess it's it's a part being too humble and a part of being a uh, the the imposter syndrome right mm -hmm. so i'm not sure i guess uh that's something i, I did uh, a few weeks ago with kurt right uh he he he's a patron on experience discord and he chose me for the one-on-one uh, -on -one session right and he's a lead i'm a junior so i tried to teach him you know share my knowledge even though i, I wasn't sure at all i was super nervous to do the uh, the feedback sessions with a lead as a junior it's it feels weird uh, for sure but uh again i guess i have to try to get over it and be more confident i guess well i think it's also worth bearing in mind and this this is when it helps i guess with me was being aware of we're such a specialized industry you know your yeah. your area which you're like an absolute master of, and you're like cook shade of art even though he does environment art and he's like a great environment artist he's some great lighting art as well and props his mm. like absolute field of like expertise where he'll school anybody shade art you have yours with lighting so people have materials foliage props i think it, it was funny it, what software was it i think it might be designer um or blender anyway the point was is that you get some superstar artists you've been looking up to for years go hey can you just show us how you did that in x software and you show them and it's like oh yeah we're such a focused industry that you sometimes just don't get a chance to explore these other avenues so even with like 10 years into your about as an environment artist you may never have got a chance to explore i don't know houdini and some junior yeah. who has dedicated his whole education to houdini suddenly is the expert in that conversation yeah. um and that's the way i, I I tend to approach it. There's some, I mean, even me as a material, I, I do a lot of materials. There's still some materials artists who come along who have, you know, been doing it for a year and a half and they're like, oh, that thing you have a trouble with? Like, if you use these three nodes, like, that fixes that. And I'm like, huh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Should I have known that? And it, it's quite a funny thing, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah. a six months of education and you can know more mm -hmm. than what most people know. It's really weird. Yeah. I mean, I have. I guess I, I really have to get over it and forget the fact that I'm still a junior, because I don't feel like, like uh, I'm a junior, but I still have that mentality that I'm still a student, and I, I still trying to figure out what I have to do and what I need to do properly. So I guess, yeah, I guess I mean, it's. Uh, as well. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. When it, when that day comes, where you're like, okay, you're now a mid mid level light artist. It's not like it's gonna be like. Like, well, now am I okay to give my mention? Now my ability is able to give mentions. Like, your work. Yeah, exactly, is right. For itself. Yeah, even this though it's a. By the way, this isn't just like a <laughs> podcast and I'm being polite. Like, true. Le legit, like, mo the scenes you've put out recently, a lot of people would love to be able to pick your brains and just be like, oh, how did you achieve that quality? How did you nail that? Yeah, again, I guess if tomorrow I would become a mid level artist, right? I, I still wouldn't be confident enough to teach I, I don't know it's i have to get over it for sure it's it's the imp imposter syndrome right i still struggle struggle with it even though i i, I kind of know what my skill set range is mm -hmm. but uh still yeah i guess that's what's best for you talking to as well like if we were speaking to some university students i'd be honest i imagine they probably would be like eh, do i want to be taught by yeah, junior, that's exactly. Weird. But then, if you spread someone within the industry who understands just how segmented it is, um, yeah, and a and also know you, they're gonna be like, fuck, "Who gives a fuck about a title? Like, dude's better than me. Teach me." Um, but I was thinking about this for mentorships as well. Like, they tend to be geared anyway a little bit more towards the people who know their way around the tools a little bit. I know for for me, for example, if someone has never ever opened substance design art and they asked me for a mentorship i pointed them towards like javier's courses on learning where it's like a complete intro to the software and maybe check out like a couple of daniel tiger's ones and some of josh lynch's ones watch some of ben wilson's talks i'm like 
I because I just don't want to teach people absolutely ground level up. It's slow. It's tedious. Like the software, the, the stuff's there already for free. Like you don't need to pay me to show you what buttons yeah. what. So what's all that like? Do you have you ever? I know you since it's been on your mind anyway. Have you thought about like what level you'd want to at what level you'd want to teach and how you'd want to teach? Have you thought about like how you would tackle that? Well, you teach the technical stuff, you know, the fundamentals and basically stuff that you can pretty much learn from YouTube, right? It's free and it's all there and there's plenty of videos. So I definitely don't want to repeat that kind of stuff, you know, just absorb and just really get the, uh, the same info that you can get for free. I guess I would rather teach stuff that I more confident about which uh, which is which isn't technical stuff but more so about the uh, artistic stuff right the stuff that i personally think that i nail that i can't that i'm pretty much uh, sure how it works for example uh, i come from a background uh, from uh, concept art and illustration that's what i wanted to do in high school so i did a bunch of you know paintings with photoshop and stuff and composition and color theory that's something that i'm Pretty sure that um, I can teach, mm-hmm. but not so uh, not so much as uh, how to bake lighting, right? Because that's very technical and that's uh, so daunting that I'm not even sure if I, I'm able to properly explain it. Um, so yeah, I guess it's something that's more uh, unique to myself, which is you know the composition stuff, art, the cartery, and how to make a beautiful render at the end and not so much as the technical like mass stuff and how to bake. You think you maybe I don't I don't repeat on the spot a little bit here. But you essentially like I guess with the stuff that you're showing off so far, the skill sets you're showing off and the stuff that you're confident in, they're long term, mm-hmm. they're like that's like art director stuff. That's like okay, I can nail good compositions. I understand how to put a good scene together. Not necessarily. I know how to make. You know, I can make props and all that sort of stuff. Like mm-hmm. I know what a good scene looks like. I have the artistic eye for it. Long term, this is like, you know, art director level stuff. I know that's why I'm for for me. I'm like I need to understand lighting better because you know, ten years, twenty years down the line, I'd like to be an an art director, but I need to get away from the sort of the specific stuff, the technical of materials and props and get more into them big picture macro brush strokes yeah did that ever has that ever entered your mind that hey the stuff i'm showing off now is preparing me for a very successful future potentially art direction so the, the way that I, I tackled this is i tried to overkill everything i do as a personal, personal projects and then if i i know that i can overkill it and successfully do it then at work as a lighting artist, I can just turn it back down just a little, a little bit, and that's would that would be plenty enough, right? So explain, yeah, I guess over, let's explain that overkill. Just how, what is going overkill? Like do something that's way more uh, that's necessary for a game, you know? For for example, the uh, one of the scenes that I've done the uh, the uh, Death Running thing, the cave, mm-hmm. which is super overcasty. Well, there's way more. Uh, assets and lights that's supposed to be right because I'm just over kidding it and I just wanted to make a, a beautiful picture at the end that wouldn't work for a game context at all right because if you were to walk in it and you if you, you know just look back it wouldn't make sense the lighting wouldn't make sense at all the fog uh, would be kind of broken so that's what I mean by over kidding it just make something just one thing uh more than enough like like really more than enough and if i were to transition that kind of stuff at work for a game context in a proper uh, production right then i could just turn it back down uh, just a tad bit and that would be more than enough it, that's what we all i suppose that's what a lot of people do when you look at portfolios like i mean god i'll take me as an example like yeah, I throw 4K textures out there with like millions of, des- of um, yeah. tessellation. It's like that's never seen a game engine in a day in its life. It's not going nowhere near it. Um, so that's it. So you, so you lean more towards dynamic lighting. Then you said you, you said you were a, you know you you lean away from the technicalities of baked and light mass and all that sort of stuff. Well, you no, I do both, both actually. Do both. Well, I do both. Yeah, I, I really do both. So I do 
uh, need to practice my technical stuff, even though I'm not ready to teach it. But I still try to attempt the uh, the physical unit of the lighting and how to bake properly. But I do also use dynamic lighting to just make uh, the project end quicker and have a proper result without you know spending three years on on something, right? So the, it's a mix of both, really, just to practice the stuff that I don't know yet. I'm not sure yet, like the how to bake uh, properly with the light mass setting. That's super daunting. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to teach that, but I still practice it. And then the dynamic lighting would be uh, to accelerate this, the work with the, uh, I don't know, for the character lighting with the robot. That's all dynamic because it's easier and it's way more quicker to iterate as a project, especially since it's my technically first character lighting. So I didn't want to spend too much time on it. I just spent, uh, I'm not sure how long, I think a week, hmm. maybe, I don't know. Dude, you, know, like, you say that about like, you want to practice baked bake light and stuff. With Lumen coming in and UE5, yeah. I'd be all invaded might be like, oh, I don't even need that anymore. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think light eyes are the ones, with UE5, I'll be honest, like, of all the sort of disciplines that are, like, are excited or like um, stand to gain the most from this UE5 update, like we don't know exactly what's coming because all these buzzwords get thrown around and we're like, oh, it's super exciting, a million trolley, uh, polygons, and that's great, but like you know, we don't actually know what that looks like. Lumen, I think is I think Lumen is the biggest addition. It's like okay, this is just a huge win for Light and Artists. Like I think it's gonna come in, it's gonna be there to stay. Um, is that is there any like I don't actually I haven't actually dived into Lumen. I know it's like you know dynamic local illumination, which looks amazing. Yeah. Um, have you looked too much into UE5, or are you like trying to just stay away from it a little bit? I'm pretty sure it's not going to be the same when it comes out. You no, know, for a game that's way uh, that's you know, way too uh, obvious. That's not going to happen, right? It's not going to be perfectly a uh, hundred million polygons and perfectly a dynamic GI, which is uh, it's not going to happen. I don't think. Uh, in the near future, but it is something I'm I'm excited about because that would remove all the technicalities. And if a lighter would know how to you know lit a, a a proper scene without the technicalities, well, Unreal Five would be ideal, right? And that I hope that's gonna help uh, get more lighting artists in the industry and get the the need of more lighters on the team. And less so the technical side of lighting artists and how how many uh, programmers or technical directors that have to uh, take care of the lighting side and just leave it to the lighting artists and get more lighting artists. Would be nice to have because it, again, like the lighting, I guess I I love watching cinematography videos where they show color grading and like just yeah. how much of an impact it makes. Like they showed it before, which like it looks trash. They showed a final color grading, which looks amazing, and then they show like five variants of like oh here's what the movie looked like like this it's the same yeah. shot but it like conveys completely different things and i'm like huh i really would love to see like more like i said more light and artists working on the project because i bet they could go a long way to really hope like and then there's also of um limitations of how, like the hardware you can't you know go overkill like you worded it um yeah but i hope we can get closer to that because that's the, that's the main thing i think that we can take away from ue5 it has been about the whole sales pitch has been taking away the tedious technical elements so the artists can be artists. I love that pitch. Like, that's a great sales pitch to me. Like of, over the years, we've you know seen so much tech pushed. You've seen procedural tech come in really strong, Houdini, all these things. Like look what what the technical stuff we could do. And then UE five, strangely enough, is almost like okay, we're going to remove the technical stuff. We're going to automate the technical technical stuff to allow you to be an artist. It's a completely different yeah. message. It's, it's quite yeah. fresh air, I find. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, I like the idea that it's it's it might be so easy that even lighting artists from the film industry could transition into games, right? Because I'm pretty sure there's plenty of lighting artists in the film industry, but they 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 might not want to try to learn the technicalities of a game engine, even though they they could be the best lighting artists ever. So with the Unreal 5, well, they could transition that and the quality of the game industry in general could, you know, boost up by a lot. Yeah, because, I mean, when I was looking into the UE5 demo, um, a lot of the props, the texture artists, they all like, they, all of them had next to no art station. They had IMBDs. They were, they were CG yeah. artists. 
and I'm like, oh, so there's a few fields that could do this, you know, um, concept art, for example. You could concept art for a film, or you could concept art for a game. They're, they're, they're very interchangeable. Uh, material arts start to go that way, you know, for example, this, yeah, James Lucas, he's a great example. Mm-hmm. He works um, on films, and he's transitioned into Quixel and more onto games. Like, that's a discipline that's becoming, you know, kind of not li- limited by the bounds of the industry. And to what you said, I, I can see if film could make, you know, really push for the real time. I know they're making steps towards it, but it's not quite the same as the offline stuff. But you might see it where it's like, okay, I'm an environment artist. It that's it. That's, it's not. I'm a games environment artist. I'm not a film yeah. environment artist. I'm just an environment artist. Oh, you need me to work on next Star Wars? Sure, I'll work on next Star Wars. Oh, you need me for next God of War? Sure, let's do that. Like, I'm not limited by the bounty industry, and actually, it might open up more jobs or just like you know opportunities because there might be lots of jobs for say film in one area, but there's no get there's no film artist there, and you've okay. got the rigmarole of trying to find people. That'd yeah. be a really nice world where it's just like, yeah. Hey, what's your next pro- instead of what's the next game you're working on? What's the next project you're working on? Yeah, oh, exactly. Actually, I'm right. in film. I'm gonna go like um, Stranger Things season three TV as well. Like that would be a real nice world to live in. Yeah, I mean that would just change the uh, the whole mindset of you know he's a senior lighting artist, but just for a game. Well, at that point, it wouldn't matter, right? He's just gonna be the lighting artist for anything really. So that's gonna help you know boost and change industry a bit how how it works how uh the team kind of works and not uh we would might have more lighting artists on a game and you know just to change a bit you know the 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 norm right yeah because a lot I've, I've had this discussion very briefly with a with a friend and it was the argument was yeah but you still need specialities and you still need people to know the ins and outs of like the engine and i'm like yeah but that's the case at every single studio. You know, any studio that works in you in your Unreal Engine, you've probably got a custom engine. And you need to know the mm-hmm. ins and outs of how your project functions compared to the next project. So yep. that rule that idea of, oh yeah, you still need your technical people, your sorry, the people who know the ins and outs for your particular discipline. Well, that's the same every single studio you go to. It's just whether the discipline's unique to games or film is the only thing that's gonna change. And I don't yeah. think that's that big like if we keep embracing real time the way we are, it what is it? It's like maybe a, a slight mindset mind, mindset shift, just like you have a yeah. mindset shift between a first person shooter and a third person shooter. Yeah, if our artists are still able to go, oh, okay, the camera's a little bit further away, so we need and therefore renders more things, so we need to be a bit more mm-hmm. like conservative. Versus like a weapons artist who goes, oh, okay, I'm right by the gun. I need to spend more time on his textures. These textures are better. Yeah. We're able to shift quality there, so why, I don't see why we wouldn't be able to go from games to film. It just means okay, just boost the quality a little, you know, by what mm-hmm. 30 percent. I mean, games and film are getting pretty close by this point. Um, yeah, for sure. With the next gen, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the line between the film and game. It's gonna be pretty blurry, and that's exciting. It is. I'm I'm curious. As to what the the use case, so I imagine offline renderers aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Um, however, I am curious as to what their use case would be. Now, obviously, there's, there's there's things I can think of as like translucency stuff. I know in Real Five, for example, they purposely didn't show any translucency materials because they haven't figured it out completely. Um, there's a couple of use cases where I'm like, okay, you probably still need an offline renderer because real time just can't do it. But outside of that, I'm like, what, what's what's the use case of an offline rendering? Like, let's say five years. Yeah. Like with that UE, especially with the UE five demo being on PS five as well. Like, it's not like that's that's nothing to like overlook. Like normally when I see tech demos, I'm like, I'll take it with a grain of salt. It's on some powerhouse machine with free titans yeah. in there and whatever. Yeah. But this is a PS five. This is this is not like a monster. This is this is a household console. Mm-hmm. That's when that was a light bulb. That was a moment for me. I was just like, "Oh, this is closer than we think. This isn't ten years away. This is two, three, four years away." Yeah, that's that's a bit exciting, mate. Yeah, I mean, I, I just can't wait how the gaming industry is going to change, and hopefully for the better. You say hopefully is that is that part of you that's concerned? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know how it's going to affect the the game in general, right? Because the, the trend right now, it's mostly photorealism 
which is okay, I guess. But that's not uh, the the taste for everyone, right? I guess uh, some games would be better if it's more stylized. And yeah, I, I just hope that not every next game next gen game would be just super realistic. That's that would be kind of boring. Oh, well, it's funny actually. So I'm going to be in in October. I'm going to be on a panel discussing this. Um, but the the conversation on realism. This is to, we're, we're discussing it in terms of like cinema. But I think the appetite for stylized is coming back. I think we've been trained so much to photorealism. I mean, okay, let's look at the reception to the Lion King photorealism. It's like people like oh, didn't like that. But then. Klaus comes out on Netflix, um, Into the Spider Verse, these hyper yeah. stylized movies, and people look and and they're still technical movies. There's a lot of tech that went into making their movies look as good as they do. But people, re- it really resonated with people. And I do think there is an appetite for it that's coming out because people. I think people might just have had, you know we've been trained so much to photo realism that our artistic eyes become accustomed to it. We I mean, look at the reception to every Marvel. You know, every Marvel movie. Oh, great. Something like CGI. Again, it's Tony Stark in an Iron Man suit. You've seen it a million times. It's not, it doesn't inspire you or anything because you've seen it, you just accept it. It's the same way I deal with like photogrammetry. I'm like, okay, that's a nice extra. It's real life. Cool. Like, that's it. I don't have an emotional response. So, to your point, I think, I think you will probably see, I think we already are seeing a shift a little bit within the industry, but I think we're going to see more and more. Not necessarily cartoony stylized, but like embracing the fantastical elements of stylized in our games, rather than just raw photorealism. Yeah, because I, I guess that's the the first thing that most student kind of, or I guess most beginner would think of the next gen and super, uh, mm. would be you know simply realistic stuff and one to one in the real life, and that's not something I I, I hope it becomes. I, yeah, like like you said. I'm kind of happy that there's uh, a a slight shift into stylized and more fantastic stuff rather than photorealism. But again, if we were to go back with the uh, the the fine line between VFX and games, there is so much VFX that's more tailored towards you know realistic stuff, you know, mm-hmm. with live action movies and stuff. So I just hope that you know stylized would become uh, more in, well becomes more trendy, I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess it's also good for light artists because it allows you to yeah. play with, you know, be a bit more expressive. You know, I I mean, I say that, light artists, you guys are the ones who get to break PBR. You're the ones who go, like, we, yeah. material artists will make sure everything's PBR ready for you guys to go, right, now let's make this actually look good rather than for realistic. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not better than good, I promise. <laughs> so, yeah. Peter, dude, it's been an absolute pleasure talking. This is, um, I'm, I think it's actually going to help quite a lot of people as well with the, the the bit we're talking about mentorships. I think people will find a lot of value in that. Um, so everyone is listening. Remember to you know like, follow, share, subscribe. But Pia, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a blast. Man, for sure. I mean, it's it's super fun to do podcasts. You know. Well, yeah. you've got good practice now. <laughs> yeah. All right, catch you next week, guys.